Okay, welcome everybody. So glad that, I mean, we are closing in on the year. It is like fast approaching and I'm so excited to welcome Stephanie back with us today. Forgive me and my very nasally voice. I'm getting over a cold. Tis the season, right? Um, but yeah, we're going to talk today with Stephanie. Um, the title of our talk is Creativity and Writing as a Spiritual Growth Practice. So I'm really excited to talk to her about that. And so welcome back, Stephanie. Yes, thank you. I'm so excited to be here and to be back and to share um, all of the things creativity and spiritual growth related. I think it is one thing that sounds great in ideal, like, oh, that would be great to put into practice and learn how to do, but it's another thing to kind of be able to connect the dots and put the puzzle pieces together. So it's one of my favorite things to talk about. Well, I'm really excited about this topic because I do see creativity as, um, as a spiritual practice because it requires discipline. I think so often we think about creativity as just like being like, like a wave that washes over you. Like it's a very mysterious thing mm -hmm. and that it just kind of hits every once in a while. But what, what do you think about that? Like what, when you think of creativity as a spiritual practice, what, what are your thoughts about that? And why do you think it is a spiritual practice? Yeah, absolutely. So I think there's something, there's something innate about creating and because we were created by the creator to create. So I always think it's like you go back to who you've been created to be by doing what you've been created to do. Like God made us, he created us. And so we are in essence created to create. So using creativity and writing as a spiritual practice is getting back to what you have been created to do and who you have been created to be. It's this idea of being able to separate not what you want, not how you see something, but it's really focusing on the process of creating, the process of getting into that creative mindset, the process of settling <clears throat> into the writing time or the creative space or creative time, and then just allowing the Holy Spirit to just work through you, whether that is giving you the words to write or the thing to create, the message to share, the colors to put together, whatever it is. But it really is this separation of all of the tasks, all of the to-dos, all of the, I think this would be a good idea. Let me work on this. And then it becomes that dedication of time and of space. Uh, I always say that inspiration shows up when we show up. And so I think that's a large part of a spiritual growth and creative practice is knowing that when you are showing up to create that God is going to meet you right there in your willingness and in your obedience to follow through and create and spend time with him through creativity and writing. Mm. That's so good. There's so much there to talk about and unpack because, um, yeah, the very first thing God did was a creative act, yeah. right? And so it is part of like this Imago day we're made in the image of God. And that when we are creating, we're imitating our creator, right? And so I love all those concepts and that it's, it's about showing up most of the time yes. <laughs> as with most things in life. So like, how did you first get interested in this topic? When, when did this first start to pique your interest? Yes. So way back when spiritual growth was kind of my interest first, um, I became a spiritual growth coach and I went through a certification program initially it was because I had hit a point of low depression, loneliness, identity crisis. Who am I? I don't know. From that point, I pursued my own spiritual growth and transformation. And then from there, I feel like it just kind of shifted over time to where it included creativity. I feel like God had to prepare me slowly for what he had in terms of no, it's not that you're aspiring to be creative. You're aspiring to write. You're aspiring to do this. It's that you, this is who you've been called to be. Really, the awakening, if you will, was The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. Once I went through that book, once I started the, the morning pages, my assistant Tabitha, by the way, once I started the morning pages and the artist dates, that was transformational to me. So much to the point that I remember having a moment where I was like, is this? 
who I am becoming or is this who I've always been? And now I'm stripping away the layers. Now I'm stripping away the understanding or the false beliefs or the negative, you know, accusations or the truths that I held wrongly about myself. So it really has been coming like creativity and spirituality is so interly connected. Uh, I mean, I don't even believe they're related. I believe they are absolutely the same thing. Creative growth is spiritual growth and spiritual growth is creative growth. It's just how you learn to express that as the process. And that's really where the difference comes in. Mm, okay. So you mentioned um, the artist way, Julia, what was her last name? Cameron. Cameron. I almost said Julia Child, but I know that's I know. <laughs> that's a very different Julia. <laughs> yeah. Um. I know that she's talked um, a little bit about the morning pages and can you talk to us a little bit about what that is? And Yes, absolutely. So um, the morning pages are where very first thing in the morning, this is how it, sh this is how it should look like in an ideal world. Very first thing in the morning, you go to your journal, you go to your notebook and you start to rewrite, brain dump, just stream of conscious, write everything that's out here to get it out on paper. So whether that's your to-do list and your to-do list is in here, you get it out on paper. So it can't clutter up your creative space and your creative thinking. Or if it's something that you are harboring or holding on to, some sort of maybe fight with your husband or some other emotional situation, maybe you start to process that aloud. Maybe you start to kind of brainstorm and map that out in your journal. But the idea is, is that you show up three pages of actual writing every day, preferably in the morning, to clear all that stuff out so that it makes room for your um, creative brain and your creative kind of component to come in. She talks a lot about that there's this, um, I think she calls it the, oh man, what does she call it? Someone else who's, who's uh, read the book maybe can help me. Sensor. I think it's a sensor. So the sensor is kind of like the editor brain in us. So the editor brain talks about like, oh, I shouldn't say that. Oh, I need to do this. And that's when we become like very task focused, logical, you know, reasonable. And we're trying to rationalize our way through things. And if we aren't careful that, you know, task focus, for example, I don't have time to write. I don't have time to paint. I don't have time to draw. If we're not careful, then that part of our brain and that part of ourself can start to overshadow the creative part, the curiosity part, the play part, that is the very essence of who we are. Mm. I, that's so interesting. You articulated that so well, because I have experienced that when I, there's something about that process of like the download, right. Of just letting all of that stuff out, getting it on the paper. Somehow it like, it validates it in a way it's like, okay, yeah, this is all taking up residence in my mind. And when I write it, I, I mean, I often write in, in a prayer format, but it doesn't, you know, just get it out of your head. Yes. It clears your mind in so many ways to open up new space, to be creative and to see, to see new things in your, perhaps in your own writing practice or whatever your art form is, right. You can kind of see things freshly. So, um, yeah, you're bringing that up made me think I need to I need to check out that book <laughs> because I yes. think it's a really um, just putting language to that oh. is so helpful. So um, you you talked about earlier about becoming a spiritual growth coach and then you know you're seeing that intertwined with just um, your creativity. So tell us again, and I know we talked about this the last time. You were with us, but talk to us a little bit about how, what you do specifically with your clients and like, what kind of work are you working through with them? Yes, absolutely. So I think a large part of it is this idea of reflection and guiding them through kind of this self-awareness and the self-reflection that they need in order to, whether it is to learn how to share their story or write out their testimonies or um, start to really see evidence and key points of God working in their life um, through the words that they share. 
Um, and then the other key point, and this is probably more of what I focus on for people who want to write a book, for example. So a lot of my clients are clients who are working on books. And this is that resistance and that opposition that comes up. So we're talking like the spiritual warfare, like the enemy at play, like all of that stuff and recognizing it for what it is and being able to like speak out against it, understand what it is, being able to know that it's white writer's block isn't necessarily something you can overcome or you can completely um, move past. But I really think it's one of those things that you work through. And I think a lot of that is based on the spiritual component of when you have God-given messages, when you have God-given stories to share, um, that the enemy is not going to want those words out there. He does not want that message out there. And so he's going to capitalize on that inner critic. He's going to capitalize on the why are you writing this? You should not be writing this. This is really, really vulnerable. Who are you to put these words out here? All of those things. And so from there, my work is really to affirm and encourage and, and walk along and help help provide like the prayerful strategies and just pray for my clients to know that they are not in it alone and that they have the support and they have the encouragement. And I do strongly believe that a lot of the like, the severity of the spiritual warfare that we feel in relation to our writing and our relation to creating is um, tied to the understanding and the ability and the impact that our art and our creative work can have on the kingdom. Hmm. So when you, when you have a client that is feeling writer's block or artistic block in some way, I mean, you mentioned a few, few things that you do with them, but how, how would you, you know, I know Martha and Space and Amy are on the on this call and others will listen to it on the recording. They're working through like creative projects. So what what would you say to them if they're if they're running up against that wall? Yes. Yeah. So I feel when you're running up against the wall to look at it as an invitation to start to see how you can meet with God and what he has for you. So a lot of times we want to like push through it. A vision that God gave me is don't push through this wall. I want you to pull up a chair and I want you to sit down. I want you to sit by it and listen to what it is I have to say. I think a lot of times we're trying to rush through that uncomfortableness. We're trying to rush through the feeling of being stuck, the rush through the feeling of not know what to say, or the, just that blah of the middle of a project. But God is really calling us to just spend more time with him. And that doesn't necessarily mean sit down and write or journal or read your Bible more. Yes, those are great. But that is walking in nature. That is coloring. That is painting. That is playing. That is singing. That is dancing. Those are all those different ways when we can tap into those creative aspects of ourselves and see them as a form of worshiping God through that, then I firmly believe that that's really when he shows up. And I know I keep saying he shows up when we show up, but that's not only in writing, but that's in creating and that's in spending time with him and knowing that it's not something that we have to do on our own, but it really is something that he's able to share us. And oftentimes he downloads those things when we're not even trying to write. It's when we step away from it. We step away from the project. We step away from whatever it is we're working on and we start to paint or we start to color. Or we go on a walk that, you know, the, we start to hear from him more and then we start to understand, okay, maybe this is the direction or this is the way that I need to go. So I think mm -hmm. that it's the idea of don't try to bang down that door. It's just maybe you need to just stand on the other side and put your ear on it and listen. That's so counterintuitive, <laughs> right? Like, I think we all want to just like, avoid that. We don't like that's uncomfortable. And we feel like uh, there's got to be something we can do to fix it. And I appreciate what you're saying. Space said the same thing. She said she's been dealing with writer's block and wanting to blame herself for it. But I think it's a lot of warfare. And I've been praying through what my fears are that are paralyzing me mentally. So yeah, thanks for sharing that space. Like, I think that that's like, that's our common experience with that is that it's like, what's wrong with me? But maybe God is just teaching you something in that. And like, maybe you need to just be still. <laughs> yes listen and find out what, what God might be showing you through that. Yeah. I think oftentimes 
it's something that it's not fully revealed yet. Like he needs you to like stop and, and sit still and, and wait because he has more to reveal for you. And that was my own experience in um, a project that I was working on. I wanted to take it one direction, but God was like, no, hold, hold the phone. Like you, you need to stop. This is not the avenue that I want. And so he would put these little areas and these little obstacles in my place until I sat still and I listened. I said, okay, I don't want to do my idea, God. I want to do your idea. But I had to kind of get through the series of my own ideas and my own ways of thinking to get to the point where I was like, okay, here I am. Like, I need you to, you know, I need you to guide and lead this. This is no longer mine. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. And that just letting it go too is really helpful. Like you, you were even just holding your hands open like that. And so I think that that's often part of the posture of our hearts too, yeah. of letting go a little bit. So, um, so when you talk about spiritual growth and I think a lot of us here, or at least on this call right now are mostly nonfiction writers. Um, what do you, what do you think, um, are there different ways of dealing with this at, depending on, you know, what kind of writing you're doing? Is it, do you, do you, do you approach this differently? Yes. So <clears throat> I interestingly just had a conversation with someone else about before this call, who I am, what I'm about, who I serve, who I help. And as I was talking, I said, oh no, I work, you know, mostly with nonfiction. Like they share their stories, their messages, they're getting it out on paper. But then I started thinking that fiction, they still have a story that they, that needs to come out. It's still a story that is inside of them that needs to come out. So I really feel the large part of the resistance and the opposition that fiction writers have are very closely related to nonfiction writers and the resistance and the opposition that they feel um, because that they feel that there's a story or that they feel there's um, characters in their head, right? I've worked with some fiction uh coaches that characters in their head that like won't let them go or won't let it go away. And so it's being able to coach them and guide them through that resistance of, oh, this is a ridiculous idea to, this is an idea that is not going away. We probably need to listen to it the same way as if we feel called and led to share our own personal story or something like that. And then it's like, oh, well, it's not going away. This nudge to write my story is not going away. This nudge to write this devotional is not going away. And it's learning to, like I said, almost kind of not turn away from, but lean into, don't you like all these little, these movements going on here? I know <laughs> all the body posturing. It's really, yeah. <laughs> but it's true. Like it, it's yeah. all connected, I believe. So, um, tell us, you know, this, the connection of the spiritual life with the creative life. Yeah. Um, how do you, how do you nurture that? Um, how do you advise your clients to nurture those things, because I think sometimes ideally you'd be on parallel tracks, right? You would be growing spiritually on this track and you'd be growing creatively on this track, but it doesn't always work out where you're equally aligned, right? Like one side is sometimes pulling stronger than the other. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. I think one of the main things that I tend to try to um, do myself and also encourage my clients to do is to focus on not the outcome, not the goal of what you're working on, but that process, like we talked about before, but specifically looking at what it means to do what you need to do to set aside that time, what it means to not focus on, okay, Bible, what am I going to get out of you today? Or what message am I going to receive? But the very act of spending time and developing that relationship, we have a relationship with God through our creating, we have a relationship with God through our writing. And then of course, we have a relationship with God when we sit down and spend time with him, whether it's journaling or in prayer, or things like that. But I think it is realizing that we have um, the relationship with him to help encourage the the creativity and to help us to move from, I have to get this book out. I have to get this, you know, picture of this flower perfectly painted a certain way, but it's moving away from that. And then just trusting him and trusting him in the process and just allowing him to guide and lead um, creative time and, and spiritual time. And it's so easy to sit here and say like, oh yeah, just trust him, let him lead. He He's got it. And it's another thing for us to actually put that into practice. And so a lot of stuff that I also work through is 
what are the insecurities or what are the false beliefs or even the triggers that you might not be aware of that you're holding on to that are preventing you from seeing this through, not seeing it through as, you know, completing a project, but seeing it through as um, allowing God fully in to the process. Um, I read this story about Johann Sebastian Bach, who um, famously signed off all of his um, orchestra pieces with SDG, Sola, Sola Dea Gloria at the end. But he also did a J and a J at the top of his pieces. And that stood for Jesus uh, Juva, which means Jesus help me. Mm-hmm. And I love that. I, I pray that all the time before I write. I'm like, Jesus help me. Like yes. when we feel that creativity block and we're like, like we can't get through We Like even just thinking through the logic of what am I trying to say? you know, we get stuck sometimes. And so that's just always been a sweet reminder and prayer for me as I'm dealing with whatever writer's block I'm struggling with and just bringing the Lord into that creative process and stop um, trying to muscle through it by myself, which is my tendency for sure. Um, Space said, Spurgeon was said to have said, I believe in the Holy Spirit with each of the 25 steps you took up to the pulpit. Oh, that's beautiful too. Um, yeah, just like every step of the way, right? Like we need, mm-hmm. we need to invite the Lord into that. So, so do you have any go-to tips for things that we can do to incorporate the Lord into our creativity? Yeah. Um, a little bit about what I'm going to be talking about tomorrow is kind of developing um, a writing routine in addition or a writing ritual in addition to a writing routine. So there is an idea of being able to create the physical space and set aside the physical space for us to sit down and write and what that routine part looks like. But the secondary part is the writing ritual. What does it look like to have a writing ritual and dedicate that time in that space of writing or creating to God? So we're going to talk about that. We're going to look about um, some affirmations and not the I am a writer. I mean, those are great. Don't get me wrong. The I am a writer. I'm a great writer. Those those are great. But I think it needs to go deeper because um, a lot of what I also talk about is just being transformed as a new creation in Christ and what that means and knowing whose you are, knowing who you belong to, knowing that you are a daughter of the most high king and having that mindset at the forefront as you begin to write is truly transformational. So a lot of the tips is what can you do to kind of saturate yourself with these reminders of who you are, who you belong to, what you have been called to do and your purpose. And then from there, let that saturation leak into the the whatever it is you're writing. So the Holy Spirit then is poured out through your words and your creation. Yeah, that's so good. And it's like, it's like, it's like if you're, if you're training to run, right? Like you have to kind of continue, you have to put the practice of putting your shoes on every day, right? You have to actually open the door and go outside. That's the same idea is what I'm hearing you say, which is um, you've got to kind of create the space and the time and the discipline around the things that you're trying um, to accomplish. So um I would love to just open it up to you all who are on this call. Like, do you all feel um, the need for this in your own life? This idea of kind of connecting your create your creative life with your spiritual life. Um, how does that how does that fit? And you have questions for Stephanie as well. Feel free to to unmute and ask away. I think this whole process of writing this book has been the most beautiful work of community with God. Um, and I I find that um, my prayer life is a lot richer for the last seven and a half years. Um, but I also find that the tension is that I don't spend as much time in the word as I would like to because I've spent so much time in my own words. Um, and so it's like an ever constant pressure to um, not sacrifice the one 
for the other. Yes. Yeah. To be really conscious that that is uh, an easy fit for me to fall into. Yes, I think I absolutely agree. And it's the fact that you know that and you're aware of that, that then leads you to be conscious and intentional about the time that you do make for it and how you carve out that. Um, so you can include the time for you in that way and not, um, you know, get get sidetracked. But yeah, I'm writing a book is a sanctifying process. I don't know if anyone, <laughs> I don't know if anyone uh, has said that lately, but writing a book will will fully change you and fully challenge you and stretch you. Um, but in the end, it's sometimes not even about the words that you're writing. It's more about what God wants to do through you as you are obedient to the call to write. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Space, thank you. We appreciate you being here. I know it sounds like she's got to leave here in a minute, but yeah, thank you for sharing that. And um, we appreciate you. Anything else, um, Amy or Martha? Thoughts or comments or questions for Stephanie? Oh, Martha, you're muted. <clears throat> it's just been really helpful to think through what you're talking about. So <laughs> I'll be Great. thinking about it. I think I tend to like segment the creative spiritual side and the pragmatic, like, okay, let's solve this problem. Yeah. Side. And the, the two really need to meet. <laughs> And hang out with each other <laughs> more than they do, I think. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that. It's like the obvious, obvious spiritual stuff, you know, it's easy for us to kind of think about, but the less obvious stuff is harder. And I think even in terms of having a business, like a coaching business, a writing business, something like that, and just like allowing God, even in like the email copy you write or the social media posting, like allowing him to kind of guide and direct, not necessarily what you think you should be writing or how you should be writing, but just allow, um, allow him into, into that space and giving him space to, to share. Yeah. I think so much of our Christian lives are like that, right? Like, I think we tend to think about so many areas of our lives as like in a, in a isolated box that doesn't touch all the other boxes of our lives. And that's just not, it's just not how life works, right? Like we are interconnected, interconnected beings, you know, and, and, and that's how God designed us to um, connect with each other and with ourselves and, and the Lord is Lord of all. So it's so great to, to invite him into the struggle. And like you said earlier, like to just kind of sit in it, to stop trying to squirm out of it all the time, but be more um, open to listening to what God might be yeah. revealing to you. Like if we could just be quiet some more than, you know, we have two ears and one mouth, right? So maybe we should <laughs> listen more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, Tabitha looks like she's tapping out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's like I'm done mom this is she's been so good though she's been great are there any other questions or thoughts um <laughs> hi Tabitha yeah if, if I can say this before my computer dies um I think I'm wondering if it, if if our problem is a perspective of ownership like if we think that parts of our life and co are compartmentalized then we're forgetful that the Lord um, is the master over every single detail of our life that he owns all the resources, our time, our money, our character, our gifts, like, um, yeah. and that if we, if we remember that and are mindful of that in every aspect of life, then it will, um, congeal all the different compartments together. I think uh, it's just yeah. the thoughts that are processing right now. So take them or leave them, but that's, no, that's beautiful. Oh, I, I love that. I love that. The first book I wrote um, talked a lot about spiritual growth 
is any and, and possible in any area that you allow God into. But again, you have to kind of allow him, you have to kind of open him, open it up and invite him into that, that space. So um, you should write down that quote from Bach, um, Kara, I want to, I want to write it somewhere like plastered. I'm not going to get it tattooed, but <laughs> yeah, just JC Juba. I, I say it all the time. I read it in Andrew Peterson's book, um, Adorning the Darkness. I don't know if you've read that book space, but that's where I found that story and it just stuck with me. Um, but yeah. Well, Adorning the Darkness by Andrew Peterson. What does the second J stand for? It's Yesu Juba, J-U-V-A. Gotcha. Which means Jesus help me. Jesus help me. Got it. Which isn't that an, an amazing thing when you think of Johann Sebastian Bach saying that? Like, because I think we think about him as just being like this prodigy, like, but he recognized that all of his gifts were from the Lord, right? And I just, I just love that story because he realized he could do nothing without the Lord's help, <laughs> even Bach, right? Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, thank you, Stephanie, so much for bringing this whole topic up and to our attention in the block. I'm so grateful. I'm thankful too for everyone's flexibility for being here today. Um, Mighty Networks just went down yesterday for some unknown mysterious reason, but it worked out and the Lord is sovereign over all, including the timing of these meetings. So we're going to um, meet with Stephanie again tomorrow, right? same time as this call and um, look forward to, to hearing more from her and kind of getting more of the nuts and bolts of putting this all into practice into our lives, right? Yeah. Cool. Anything else, Stephanie? Um, no, tomorrow I will not have little miss over here. So I will be <laughs> able to be fully present, fully focused and fully engaged. So I'm excited to bring bring the message and encourage you to grow deeper in your relationship with God as you tap further into writing as a spiritual practice. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. We're looking forward to that. Thank you all for being Bye. here. You guys have a great afternoon. Good job. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.